In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take any video file and turn it into this small world effect. Now typically to make this effect, you have to shoot your video using a 360 camera setup. But with this specific technique, what we're actually doing is taking a standard video and then turning it into a small world effect. Now the first clip I have here on the timeline is this clip of this girl in a yoga pose. And what I want to do is just come over here, right click and go new composition from selection. So now I have my clip laid out here in the timeline. What we're going to do is we right click on that and come down to pre-compose. So I'm just going to call mine yoga clip and I want to leave all the attributes and hit okay. So now we open this clip up and the first thing we actually want to do is in order for this effect to properly work is both sides of the screen actually have to match. So this side has to be exactly the same as this side. Now, if you had shot this with a 360 camera, that issue isn't going to be a problem because the edge of both of the frames is going to be exactly the same. Now, just before we move on, I make weekly tips and tricks videos just like this one. So if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out. Now with this clip, we can see that they are very different. So we need to try and match those together in order for this effect to work. So what we're going to do is just scale this one down very slightly here and move it down to this bottom corner. Might even just bring that up a little bit there. Then I want to take that clip and I'm just going to duplicate it. Then what we need to do is flip that clip across to the other side. So I'm just going to drag this across and then position this over so that the edge of this frame here matches that side of the frame. Now you can see these two clips don't match. So we need to create a mask to create a bit of a blend between those two clips. So what I'm going to do is come up to the rectangle tool and just draw a bit of a mask going over this part of my image. And then I want to come down here and just give this a bit of a feather. Now you can adjust your mask to get the best possible match but it's all about just trying to match those two clips as best you can. Now, the great thing about this is it doesn't have to be perfect and you're going to see why when we actually create the small world effect. So now when I come back to my main composition here, you can see that the clip has automatically updated on our timeline and we need to add a few things to this clip in order to create the small world effect. Now, the first thing is we're going to come over here to the effects and presets and I want to drag the transform effect straight onto that clip. Now, the reason we want to do this is because we need to rotate this clip 180 degrees. So it's basically flipped up horizontally. Then I want to come back to my effects and presets and add the polar coordinates. And I also want to add the optics compensation onto that same clip. Now from here, it's just a matter of adjusting a few of those settings to get the desired results. So the first thing is we're going to come over here and I want to change this to be rect to polar. Now, when I start scaling at this E, that we automatically create that small world effect. Now, one problem you can see here that when I scale this all the way up to 100, by using this technique of mirroring the edge, we've automatically created this line that comes down the middle here. Now, what you can actually do is just drop this back to 99 or lower, and you can see that that automatically disappears on the final output. So now what we want to do is just scale this whole effect up and that's what the optics compensation is for. So we want to turn on reverse lens distortion. I'm going to change this to be vertical and then I can just scale this up. I'm also holding shift on my keyboard and that's then going to fill all of the edges of my screen. So pretty much we already have the finished effect. Now there's a few things I want to show you about where things may go wrong using this effect or things that you should just know about how this effect is actually working. Now the first thing we added was this transform effect. Now if I turn that off, you can see what that's actually doing. Now if I scale this down, you can see that that reverses the overall effect or flips it to the outside. Now the reason for that is if you imagine the clip, we're actually bending it from the outside in. 
So that's why when we add the polar coordinates that it looks the way that it does. So by flipping that image upside down, we're now bending the inside of it in and we're creating that small world effect. Now the other thing is we may just want to adjust the rotation of this small world. So I can do that by just hitting W on my keyboard and just rotating this entire layer around. Then I can just scale this right up to fill that frame. And I can also adjust this optics compensation just to fill in those edges or slightly shrink it down. And you can see we have our finished effect all done. Now I want to show you just one other example I have here, which is this man running. So I'm just going to take this clip I'm going to create a new comp from selection and I want to just start this process again. So I'm going to pre-compose this one. I'm going to hit okay. And then I'm just going to open up that pre-composition. And then I want to do the same thing. So I'm going to scale this down and I want to mirror the other side of my image. So I'm just going to duplicate my image here, flip it over, line it up on the edge and then create a new mask and give it a bit of a feather here. Now, the reason I've picked this clip in particular is because this is one of the issues you're going to run into if you haven't shot your video using a 360 camera. And that is that this person is actually mirrored on both sides of our image. Now, a simple way to fix this is actually just to scroll ahead in time until they're out of the frame, or I could even scale into that frame to get more of my edge and then create a clean mask on the side. The other thing is I just want to adjust this mask up here. You can see that we've also got a difference in the color of the background. So you can see it's a lot, it kind of goes from a light part to a dark part, and then it goes back to a really light part. So we've got more of a distinctive edge. Now I'm just going to take all of the settings from our clip over here. I'm gonna copy those and paste them onto this just to speed up that process. I'm going to scale this up here. And with that effect now pasted on, you can see that we have more of a distinctive line on our edge. So we've got two suns essentially appearing on our image here. Now, just to show you what actually happens, if I was to take this clip and actually just scale it up to the full frame and move it back, just to show you what actually happens, you can see we get a really distinctive edge on our image. So it's really important that we try and blend that edge as best as possible. So you can mess around with all the different settings to get different looks for this effect. So if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.